Hi, today I will talk to you about the Peel 3 and its software. The Peel 3 scanner has a brand new design. It has three cameras. The top and bottom camera are used to scan geometry and surface of the object. Around the cameras are infrared light to be able to see the targets placed on the object. In the middle, there is the camera that captures texture and color. Around the camera, there is a ring of LED lights. Right over it, there is the infrared projector. The infrared is projected as a series of line over the surface of the object. The top and bottom cameras see how those series of lines are being deformed and sending that information to the software and recreate the object in real time. On the back of the scanner is the LCD touchscreen. The LCD touchscreen will display information as you are scanning. You'll also be able to change settings while you are scanning. You'll be able to start, pause, zoom in, zoom out on your image, change the shutter speed, and it will let you know if you are too close or too far from your object. The scanner has a triangular handle that allows you to hold it in different positions and make it easier for you when scanning your object. The scanner is connected to your computer via a USB and on the same cable there is the electrical connection. Calibrating your scanner before starting a project is very important. This will ensure that your scanner will be optimal when scanning. To do the calibration, you can follow the instructions on the screen. You simply take out the calibration plate, place it over the box and position the scanner in the same way it shows on your screen following the little ghost scanner. Make sure the X and Y axis are aligned and that you are pointing at the center of the plate. Once there, you simply pull up your scanner and follow the scanner on your screen. The calibration can be done once a week if your scanner is always in the same environment. If you are changing environments, for example, if you are in a lab in the morning and then in the afternoon you must go outside and scan, you will have to do a second calibration in the second environment. If the scanner is always in the same environment, the calibration can last up to seven days. After seven days, the software will let you know when it's time to do a new calibration. Preparing your object before you start scanning is also very important. The Peel 3 is very good at scanning objects that have lots of geometry. It will use the geometry to position itself in space around it. If your object doesn't have a lot of geometry, you will need to place a few targets on its surface. Make sure to place targets on flatter areas and not too close to the edges or highly curved corners. A few targets here and there is going to speed up the scanning process. Before you start scanning, you must select the parameters. Start by selecting the size of the object that you will be scanning. Are you scanning something tiny as a chess piece, something small, medium, large, or are you scanning a human person? Then select the size of the details for your mesh. How small are the details of your object that you are trying to capture? Are there very fine, smaller than four millimeters? Fine, between four to eight millimeters? Normal, between eight to 15 millimeters? Or coarse, larger than 15 millimeters? You can also manually customize the resolution that you want for your scan. Then you can select the output. Do you want your scan to be balanced using the optimal settings to produce the best mesh within a reasonable processing time? Do you want it enhanced, where the data will be analyzed and processed to reduce the scan noise and sharpen the edges? This might take a little bit longer. Or do you want to go quickly with the Express and use the minimal settings to speed the processing time? Or are you looking to send it to a 3D printer by making it watertight? This will ensure that all the openings are closed. Lastly, you can select if you want to scan with or without colors and set the texture resolution to high or low. Once you have selected the parameters, click on Next and go to the scan step. Now, to start scanning, place yourself in front of the object about 40 centimeters or a foot away and press Start. As you start scanning, you will see the object appear on your screen. You can see that there are some lines on the surface of the object with different colors. The green means that you're at the right distance from the surface that you're scanning. The red means you're too close and you have to move back a little bit. The blue means you are too far away and you have to get closer to the surface. Make sure that you're always in the green zone while you are moving around your object. Try to stay as perpendicular as possible to the surface area that you're scanning. You can move around your object if you need to, or if you have your object placed on a turntable, you can rotate it. When encountering small holes, try to scan from all directions around it to get as much of the inside of the hole as possible. The Peel 3 scanner can scan holes with a diameter as small as 3 millimeters. Once we are done with our first scan, we can click on Next, and it will take us to the Clean step. In this step, we can start cleaning our mesh and removing all the unwanted data. It will create a clipping plane and remove the background. Start by removing the background, and then you can select the scan data that you want to keep and the data that you want to delete. In this project, we're going to flip our object and create a second scan of the other side to be able to merge them together and have a complete scan. Click on the plus button, and it will take us back to the scan step to scan the other side that we need for the merge. We repeat the scanning process for this side. 
When scanning for a merge, we have to make sure that we capture common surfaces between both of our scans to help us later during the pre-alignment for the merge. When we are done with our second scan, we clean this scan just like we did with the first one, making sure we remove all unwanted data. Then click on the next step to go to merge. Thanks to the targets on the part, the pre-alignment was done automatically. It recognizes all the targets on the object from both scans and use the common ones to bring them together. We then go to the next step, which is the alignment. Once in the align step, the origin of our scan is placed at the center of mass of our object. We can now select the desired alignment by constraining it with axes or planes, using the best fit geometry on our object. Additional alignment tools are available with a PeelCAD license, which will be demonstrated later. In the improve step, we have different functions that allow us to improve our mesh. We can create distances between two points that we select. We can clean the mesh by deleting all the abnormalities created when the mesh was generated. We can fill holes completely or partially or create some bridges. We can decimate our mesh to reduce the number of triangles while preserving the original shape of our geometrical features. We can also smooth the surface of our mesh to reduce the effect of noise and roughness on the mesh. We can sculpt by engraving or embossing directly on the mesh. We can also edit boundaries, modifying the shape of the triangles along them. Finally, we can also remove some spikes by detecting and flattening each spikes separately on the mesh. If you did not scan with colors and you click on Next, it will skip the colorize step and go directly to the export. During the export step, you can choose to export the mesh directly with various file types available, the most common being STL. At this stage, it is also possible to save the session or activate a trial for the Peel.CAD module. The Peel.CAD module is our reverse engineering bridge. With a valid license, it adds a Peel.CAD step to the workflow, replacing the existing align and improve steps. This new integrated step seamlessly connects scanning to a CAD environment, offering many additional options. You will be able to align your scan, create geometrical entities such as points, lines, circles, planes, cylinders, spheres, and cones and even create cross-sections, silhouettes, and find the pipe center line. You'll also be able to create distances and angles. You can also create NURB surfaces that are workable in a CAD environment. You have different tools to delete, copy, and cut your mesh. You can clean your mesh again, just as we did in PLOS. All the tools from the Align and Improve steps are integrated into Peel.CAD, with even more functionalities available compared to Peel.OS. You could now edit your mesh by creating a shell or offset. You can extend the boundaries, cut the mesh with a plane, make it watertight, and sculpt your mesh. You can scale your mesh if you need to, and you can extrude boundaries. You can cut your mesh with a curve and flip or fix the normal of your mesh. If you have various scans, you can bring them all into Peel.CAD and compare your meshes to see the 3D deviations from one to the other. You can also combine different meshes together to create one STL file or merge them just as we did it in the previous module. When working in Peel.CAD, we can easily begin creating all the necessary geometrical features. You can start by creating planes and a few cylinders, and use those for our alignment. After we have created our new alignment, we can begin creating all the additional geometrical features needed for transfer to our CAD software, and even constrain them using our alignment. We can create 2D and 3D features, as well as NURB surfaces. You can see I selected a part of the object, copied it, and created a NURB surface out of that section. Once I have created all the features that I need, I can select all entities in my navigation tree and transfer them directly to SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, they are imported as native features and I can edit them instantly. I can also go back to peel.cad and export my features as IGES, STEP, CSV, or DXF. As demonstrated with the Peel 3 and Peel.OS, we can scan, clean, merge, align, improve, and export our mesh. With a Peel.CAD license, you'll also be able to create all the features needed for reverse engineering and send them to your preferred CAD software. I hope this video has helped you understand how the Peel 3 scanner and its software solutions work and how they can benefit you and your projects.